Hello, hello. Welcome back to another lovely lunar live stream. And today on this the special weekend, and the fact that I'm streaming, and also just the fact that I want to get the story done because Alpha is a great character, and I wanna I wanna see where it goes. So let's just get into it, yeah. I never look up at the sky, even when this planet is scarred beyond recognition. I was born here, and my path forward is paved here. If you want to walk with me, then let's go. She's so cool. She is just so cool. Uh, oh, but... So... Involving her... Speaking of, I need to up train. <clears throat> oh, overclock materials. Um, oh, there's not a quick train option. This is kind of. Okay, so 30 is the max level. Skills. Oh. Burst booster. Thrill of a cell. Light streaks. Oh, I need more. That stuff. Uh, oh, this is the one. Unquenchable Fortitude, I believe. Yeah. Parry skills. Uh, Quenchable Fortitude. And then... Uh, this one? Yeah. Train, evolve, no, I would need more. More things of it, but okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, carry. Equip, got it, alright. But, let's, let's go. Wintry Shackles. Main story. Twenty three dash twelve. The beginning. Haha. <laughs> ha. Not as grand as one would imagine nor does it have any unnecessary decorations. The building just sits quietly in the mountains like a black rock. Is this the North Asian Research Institute of Life Science and Evolution? After taking off his eye mask, the male researcher exclaims as he looks at the fortress that blends in perfectly with the surroundings. It's already early spring, but the dark soil is still covered by a thin layer of melting snow. Apart from the fortress built into the rocks, no sight of human civilization could be found nearby. Still, fully armed patrolling guards can be seen between the steel structure. How unimpressive. Ah, I think that fits us well. A well-mannered man walks out from the, an exit nearby. I heard of this practice called stone gambling. People would spend millions to buy mineral rocks that could possibly contain jadeite inside. Once a deal is agreed upon, the seller would cut the stone open, 
a high-grade jadeite might Im may immediately earn the buyer a huge fortune, but many only end up with an ordinary rock with nothing. The gamblers are betting their vision and luck on the stones. To us, we have no clue how many more attempts it will take for the research to be successful, or whether it will be successful at all. We don't know whether we will get any results before we run out of funds. That's no different from stone gambling, don't you think? Before getting a real result, efforts are but unimpressive stones. Who will care about them other than the buyers? Of course, we would still make contributions to science by eliminating the wrong answers. But to us, we'll just become other people's stepping stone. The man says with a self-mocking laugh, are you sacked by the department, or did your entire team run out of funds and get disbanded? That's a very sharp question. Don't say that to your colleagues. The researcher gives a resigned look after hearing the man's straightforward comment. But I'm not a researcher here, strictly speaking. I'm just a businessman who came here to hand over something. I've heard of your name, Mr. Goodwin. It's a great shame that those boring fools can't appreciate your bold experiments. Hmm. Rest assured that you will get all the support you want. Hope we will meet again. The man quickly walks into the helicopter that Godwin just left. Its blades send snow flying, hitting Godwin's face. Feeling the chill, he wraps himself closer with the coat. So cold. After billions of years of evolution, humans have finally climbed to the top of the food chain. The earth is like a comfortable cradle, protecting humans with its atmosphere. However, this shelter is also an umbilical cord that humans cannot lose. It firmly chains their civilization to the earth. Extreme environments, mutated germs, even the slightest deviation from comfortable temperature would make the fragile human body rapidly deteriorate. Not to mention the deadly radiation, low temperature, and lack of oxygen in space. Mankind's longing for the universe cannot make it less harsh to themselves. That is why they have spent a great amount of resources to improve the life support systems in space. Humans are not sending themselves to outer space, they are bringing the Earth's ecosystem there. That is nothing but an, but an extension of the umbilical cord. Without a vessel vast, like the Earth, without infinite energy, where could this cord reach? Perhaps humans will never find the next comfort zone before exhausting all their resources. The humans... This is like a deadly winter that they will never be able to survive through. But this time, they will attempt to change themselves and cut off the cord. So they can get through the deadly winter in the universe. This is also why he signed that suspiciously long contract and came here. Because in this place, humans will have a chance to step out. Step onto another ladder of evolution, again after tens of thousands of years. Only that this time, they will get to decide where it leads. Clang. As the black steel doors open, the sound of a rotating shaft brings Godwin back to reality. Of course, before those great visions come true, both Godwin and the, co and the covert investors have a more obvious purpose. Project Winter is like a well-nurtured giant tree. The higher it reaches towards the sky, the deeper its roots have to extend into the darkness underground. No matter what it takes, they want to take control of time, the ultimate resource of the universe. Godwin casts one last glance at the snowy mountains, then turns back and steps into the dark passage. Two uninvited guests have come to the silent fortress. Here we are. The torturous mountain pass did not slow them down at all. Soon, the entire Fort Winter has appeared before the two of them. Lucia and Alpha approach the building. To their surprise, no alarm was sounded. It's too quiet here. What happened? We'll find out after we get in. The surveillance cameras are still following them as they move, suggesting that this place is not deserted. Instead, it is just silently observing the actors on the stage. Alpha looks up at the massive gate in front. While the fort is not actively shutting them out, it does not seem to welcome their arrival either. 
It seems this gate can only be opened from inside. Lucia came to a conclusion after investigating briefly. For a large research facility like this, there should be other emergency exits, but search elsewhere. There's no need. The gate is thicker than the length of your blade. It's impossible to cut it open. That's not what I meant. Alpha touches the security device with her fingertip. Red electric current flows through the device. Soon, the gate opens, revealing a deep, dark passage. Leading the way, she walks across the storm and enters the building. She walks across the storm, you say? So... I'm not gonna say it. Um, I'm not gonna say it. Could one say that she is the storm that is approaching? Did I say it? Okay. Woo! Actually, gameplay with with the new Lucia Alpha Crimson Abyss, North Asian Research Institute of Life Science and Evolution. According to the elevator's floor plan, this floor seems to be their lab. Might find some useful info here. Identity the identity verification lock has been disengaged. This is actually really cool. Camera being from up here. Oh. Side door was open. But now it's locked. Oh. What is this? These look, um, is that a brain? I'm going to assume that's a human brain, yeah. Or at least a brain replica. A lot of data here is corrupted. Only a few logs remain. Project Celia. Celia. I remember this project started before the punishing virus. First time I heard of it was when dad was watching the news. Right, back then it was touted as a project that could grant humans immortality, intended to be used first on scientists and great minds. Finding the project's name here means it's not entirely unrelated to Project Winter. Look, there's an experiment log here. From cloning embryos, to dissecting human bodies, to interfacing mind with mechanical frames. Aside from the cloning, most of this is standard procedure for early constructs. Nothing out of the ordinary. These frames, left in their culture vessels, are part of the experiment. Waking them up should give us the answers we need. Uh, that or it's gonna make them go haywire. Awakening specimen. Specimen vitality insufficient. Please proceed to the labora laboratory to inspect the procedure and replace the specimen. The entrance ahead is unlocked. Let's go. What are you looking at? Rest in peace. No need to say that out loud. They can't hear you anymore. The dead may not hear, but those words are for the living's comfort. At least, that's what Liv would have said. Good on you, Lucia. Alert. Intruders detected. Okay. Life and death are but a moment apart. <laughs> I shall pave a path. The sun is 
Oh, that's right. I have to. It was a waste, but it was so cool. Okay, and then we go, we go through- oh, more enemies, okay. silent is just it's so cool oh that just instantly killed them all Jesus Christ that's a lot of damage this terminal still works let's see if there's any data left let me try Photosensitive control. Switch to translucent material number one. Back. Okay, exit. Oh, what's this? There's another construct here. Was he part of the experiments too? Could be another intruder. Check him for any. <coughs> anything useful uh, search here standard chest plate undamaged no sir sign of damage ginger male status aberrant test subject nx-89 obviously the item we need to be looking for but let me check over here low poly gun standard issue pistol out of ammo obtained admin's key and admin's id key why would a test subject have it up oh, that in now we have entrance access control Unlock entrance. Yay. Unlock. Because now if we're over here, we can see... We can see what's over there. Oh, there's more stuff over here. More secrets. Oh. Is this some kind of cub? Uh. Was it originally yours? Nah, just something similar. Hey! <laughs> Motorbolt. Alright, let's see. Holy lore. Okay. News Archive. July 13th. The contract plan of human experiment on death row prisoners has been terminated officially. The plan approved by the world government has been around for three years. Originally, it was a charity contract signed by the prisoner and their family voluntarily for the prisoner to assist in the medical experiment after receiving compensation. However, this year, it was revealed that the related institutes had borrowed the prisoners secretly to carry out inhuman experiments in the name of the world government without their agreement. After that, people started a mass protest against the plan. Three days later, the plan was completely halted. Human experiments were once again listed as an illegal operation. Yeah, I would hope so. Uh. Uh, oh no. 
that's not good. Um, I seem to have somehow uh, locked myself in here. It's not letting me back out. Um, yeah, it is not letting me. All because I wanted to read some lore, huh? Okay, here we go. Group A, BioBrain, experiment subject list. When in doubt, just press random buttons on the keyboard until one of them does something, I guess. Group B, CyberBrain experiment subject list. 00237-00897-33254-33278-00178-02971. Group C, BioCyberBrain Bio experiment subject list. AC5465, VC1120, MX3545. Lab report, 45551. Name this phenomenon mind deviation, a mismatch between individual consciousness, self-preconception, and the physical body accompanied by an extremely no low neural sync rate. A significant 94.1% of subjects experienced difficulty in body control when this phenomenon occurred. Additionally, the majority showed strong signs of agitation or depression with a destructive impulse towards themselves and others. Despite any treatment, 48.12% retained a certain degree of memory disorder. Data of the later section of this report have been damaged. Lab Report 49012 Subjects implanted with these mind replicas were discovered to possess a shared cognition. We named this homologous consciousness, which would which could allow them to transmit information and emotion amongst themselves in a nearly imperceptible manner. Mind replicas. That's like what's going on with Alpha and Lucia. The work log was created before the punishing virus and those experiment reports. The regular check is done. We've picked 8 out of the 103 subjects for the next round of cultivation. Among them, subject CB103 is closest to the target state, whether this is related to her relationship with Redacted remains to be seen in further experiments. CB107 has been confirmed dead after delivery. CB103 showed a high level of concern for the baby and requested to touch it. Work log, 575446. A work log was created before the punishing virus. Oh wait, that was the one already. Work log, 575459. All selected eight subjects are dead except CB103. Please refer to the attachment for details. We checked up on CB103 and found she was... Pregnant. Researcher Redacted confessed what he did. Professor Redacted believes that this is probably the reason why CB-103 is still alive and proposed to let CB-103 deliver before participating in the regular experiments again. Work log 575518. The record here is incomplete. If CB-103 will be your Scythelia and give birth to Redacted. The success is around the corner. Well then. What the heck is wrong with these people? Sorry about that. 
tricks of not having my own place. Okay. I believe now we need to go... Oh no, we have to leave the lab, that's right. So they were doing experiments. One of the researchers got one of the... One of those involved with the experiments. And then... After the last security robot fell to their blades, a brief moment of silence has returned to the empty lab. Two of them start to check undamaged documents on the desks and terminals while maintaining a certain distance in between. What's this? A report has caught Alpha's attention. Ah, how ironic. What's the matter? Read it for yourself. Alpha hands over the report. City 23, Conservation Area 112, Depot D56. These are all small-scale bases destroyed by hetero creatures. Hetero creatures weren't the only things behind those deaths. The attacks. They had planned everything. As Lucia reads through the detailed attack plans, her hand starts to shake uncontrollably. Only in a chaotic environment can they accomplish their shady businesses. They also need more missing persons for their experiments. Alpha activated the self-destruction program of the cultivation tanks. Without a sound, the test subjects have dissolved in the transparent liquid. What are you doing? Alpha looks at her other self on the other side of the cultivation tank. Through the rippling liquid, Lucia's reflection gradually merges with her own. I'm giving them a peaceful ending. Do you want them to continue serving Project Winter in these forms? Without a word, Lucia puts away the report. Rest in peace. Submitting these, this report won't do anything to these people behind the curtain. It would only bring trouble to yourself instead. But that doesn't mean I should let this darkness continue to spread. It will continue to feed on mankind's greed. As long as humans still long for the Ascension Network, your efforts will only be futile. Alpha lets out a self-mocking laugh. Even the specialized frames that helped you through the crisis were the product of these plans, weren't they? Hmm. I still don't think that's right. The past mistakes can't be corrected, but it doesn't mean we should continue doing the wrong things. I don't think the situation is bad enough for us to give up all the good things. It's a good outlook, Lucia. 23-13 Imprisonment Self-modification is destined to be a painful path. To change humanity itself means that all the social structures, ethics, and morals built upon the biological foundations of humans will be reshuffled. It will take a long time for humanity to ease the pains that emerge from the transition between old and new orders. I'm so disappointed in you. Godwin stares at the newly joined research assistant in a temporary prison modified from an underground warehouse. He sounds incredibly calm. Why did you attempt to leak the information? Did the Science Council send you here? Or was it Kowloong? Actilek? How much did they offer you? Nobody sent us here or made any offer, it's just that we couldn't take it any longer. Professor, let's stop. Those experiments should not continue. I told you on the first day you arrived. Unlike other projects, we were trying to embrace a new evolution. 
Don't let the shackles of the old time hold you back. You threw those people directly into the experiment. Biologically, they were no different from the clone test subjects obtained through Project Cythelia. They... I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But we were unable to get any more variety in the clone samples. A technology that can only be applied to selective individuals is useless. The assistant remained silent. Godwin lets out a sigh. The curiosity of humans has already begun to compromise with their physical conditions. Back in Newton's time, a human could master all the available scientific knowledge with sufficient perseverance and talent. These days, just learning the basics of a minor field of science would consume a person's entire life. How much innovation can they make after wasting away their mind's golden time? It's highly likely in the future that a person can't even finish learning a subfield throughout their life. By that time, it'll be too late for mankind to change. No need to lament for these people of the old days. The greatest contribution to the new era will be to become its foundation. But sir, aren't we also from the old days? No, we are the trailblazers. Pioneering in a new era always comes with blood and sacrifice. You either become a trailblazer, or you end up a stepping stone. That's a duty that nobody can escape. I hope you can understand. You are my best student. If that's the case who will be able to tell us what, we, what we're doing is right. Only those who have reached the end deserve a second chance to talk about right or wrong. But they will never have a second chance. Professor, there is no future in your eyes. I only see a devil. As Lucia and Alpha go deeper into the Institute, they see bullet marks dented and shattered screens, as well as overturned desks and chairs everywhere. All of them are revealing the intensity of the conflict that took place earlier. However, why are there no bodies? If there is any blood stain left, they could have at least traced it, but all the evidence seemed to have been cleaned away by the diligent cleaning robots. The cleaning robots wouldn't be able to carry the bodies. Someone else might be here. Alpha recalls a voice that told her about the shuttle. Could it be her? Alpha has never ruled out the possibility that this is a trap. She suddenly sees someone out of the corner of her eye. You! Her dagger cuts through the air, creating a small whirlwind that sends all the paper flying. A black humanoid was impaled on the wall. The paper slowly falls to the ground, revealing its real look. It's a test subject from the cultivation tank. Well, this must be their assembled product. What a horrible taste. We'll probably see a lot of the enemies like this in the next area. Even if they can still move, they are but mindless counterfeits that are neither constructs nor humans. They are no mercy. Don't be fooled by that brain on them. You don't need to remind me. System decontamination complete. Seems that this floor is the research center of the brain of the mind. No detailed information that can be found in the hall. Let's keep moving. Anything back here? No? No, that's locked. Okay. Up, up. Alright, let's go. This elevator can take us to the next floor. Beep boop beep. Gotta hit the beep boops. Oi. Defeat all the enemies, okay. I need to use another control panel. Uh, 
บีบบบบอ่ะ how convenient the card I need enemy up up Is this all I, have? I was gonna say why can't I do my <laughs> my signature move yet Looks like the sensor for the gate turned off to stop the corrupted. I can open the door from yours from my side. Uh, here? No, over here. Beep boop beep. Beep boops, more beep boops, and then. Ah, oh, more enemies. Lovely. Life and death are but a moment apart. I will sever this prison of fate. Is this all I have? Lucia, what are you doing here? Went well this time. This should be. Hold on, I think we've got company. Hey. Endless infected test subjects swarm out from all directions. Two of them, surrounded in the center, look like waves in the black ocean. Alpha cuts a test subject in half with her dagger, then spins her hilt in a crescent to knock away another enemy approaching from her back. The test subject is thrown into the air and frozen by a chilling tornado that falls to the ground and shatters. As Lucia pulls back her thruster to block a frontal attack, one test subject crawls to the ceiling and descends upon her. Lucia senses the danger and wants to move to the side, but another test subject grabs her blade. She is halted for a split second, but the falling attack is imminent. A thunderous clap strikes over her head, leaving behind a pungent odor of ozone. As the threat above her disappears, Lucia slashes apart the test subject, grinding her, grabbing her weapon, and falls back. She leans on Alpha's back. Seeing their retreat, the test subjects halt their attack, as if they are thinking of a solution. This, this image goes hard. This is so good. How are you? So far so good? Although their actions are still swift, both of them have an imperceptible fatigue in their tone. And facing, while at, facing enemies from all directions, they still have to focus more on suppressing the noises in their mind. The test subjects seem to have noticed their exhaustion. They begin to swarm over again after staring at them for only a brief moment. One side each. All right. Lucia's thruster deflects the attack of several corrupted like a shield, a crimson katana then cuts them in half. Lightning dances on the test subject's dark bodies, stunning them briefly. Within the next instant, a blade swipes over and destroys their central system with precision. The light of the two blades mirrors each other, forming a perfect circle. Wave after wave, dark tides chain charge at them only to be reduced into foam, unable to shake the rock at the center. Still, the rock is gradually collapsing inside. Uh, uh. I do not need to ask to sense each other's condition. The seemingly endless battle is wearing them down. The screeching noise deep in their mind is getting increasingly clear, to the point that their actions are being hampered. After defeating another wave of attack. Alpha. Ready. One short sentence is enough for them to understand each other's intentions. 
Their tactics were already incredibly similar to begin with. The brief cooperation has created an impressive level of synergy. That they will give up the passive defense and eliminate all the enemies with one charged up strike. Lightning strikes a large area near them, creating a short window for Lucia. The airflow from the thruster's tail is sending the hem of the duo's outfit flying. Holding onto the tight onto the thruster, Lucia rises to midair. Meanwhile, Alpha puts her blade back in the sheath and steps on the katana that Lucia had struck into the ground. With a strong push, she has reached the same height. Charged to the limit, Lucia hurls a frost attack towards the ground, freezing all the test subjects below. The indicators on Alpha's blade sheath light up one after another. As she draws the blade at an imperceptible speed, everyone is blinded by the dazzling lightning. When two of them fall to the ground, their vision has been restored. The ground around them is full of scorched black marks from the lightning strikes. All the test subjects lie on the ground lifelessly, becoming part of the scorched earth. Lucia pulls her katana out from the ground, trying to calm her simulated breathing. Alpha also sheathes her blade after confirming there are no enemies in sight. Let's get out first. Before Alpha could finish, they heard a horrifying noise underneath the trembling ground. The feeling of weightlessness soon arrives. The ground was already on the brink of collapse. Their charged up attack became the final straw. This depth is abnormal. The depth below is a lot greater than the room's height. Even constructs have a high chance of injury if they fall directly to the bottom. Even if they are lucky to land unscathed, they still need to watch out for falling rocks. As Alpha searches around for a stepping place, for stepping places, she suddenly feels a drop in the nearby temperature. A hand reaches out to her. Over here. Thressa can hardly carry two constructs. Lucia freezes the falling rocks and barely connects them into a track. Following Lucia. Alpha also steps onto the icy track. She deflects the incoming rocks with her hilt as Lucia continues to make the track. Soon, they can feel solid ground under their feet. Lucia's thruster is already covered in frost. She puts it away and inspects the unfamiliar environment. Can't find this basement in the previous records. There's only one possibility then. This place is a secret even to Corona's own staff. Luna was here before she was transferred. Twenty-three, fourteen. Abyss. The torch that was supposed to help civilization survive the winter has turned into deadly flames. Are you asking us to change our direction of research and design the constructs for military use? Godwin frowns at the request. My research isn't for such a boring purpose. Go find Daedalus or the Polar Institute. Humans are losing the war against the punishing virus. We urgently need a new weapon to bring the situation under control. Mr. Godwin, we hope you can understand. The man uses used a pleading tone, but he left no room for Godwin to negotiate. Even if I am to alter my field of research, the available materials aren't made for such experiments. Now that Project... Celia is compromised. I have no spare. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godwin. The other departments will provide full support. In a war that puts the survival of mankind at stake, there will be no shortage of volunteers who are willing to give their lives. If only they have actually volunteered. Mr. Godwin, if you really can't handle the stress, we can send someone else to replace you. Don't forget to test the adaptability of Tantalum polymers in advance. There's no point in running an experiment that is guaranteed to fail. No, we need those failures. Uh-huh. How about taking this opportunity to find out how to improve the test subject's adaptability to copolymers? Failed surgeries are just a common misfortune at this time anyway. No, oh, these really are just completely evil. After leaving the collapsed area, Lucia and Alpha are walking in a dark corridor. 
Unlike upper levels, there is only one straight passage in this one. All the complex routes have been merged together. These marks are quite new. They were left by construct weapons. Alpha looks at the marks on the corridor walls and quickly comes to a conclusion. This is Kurono's important asset. They won't give up that easily. Alpha has suddenly found an answer to the question that has been haunting her. Unlike us who came in by coincidence, they should have their own access to the facility. Their priority must be to recycle the most important asset. That's why there's no trace of them in the upper levels. Hmm. You have been distracted since just now. What is it that you want to ask? Did you say this was where Luna was before she was transferred? Though they only told you part of the truth, why am I not surprised? How is she now? You don't need to know. Unless you need to eliminate a greater threat like Polyphage, what other reason do you have to be on the same side as her? You came along... Came alone without your squad because you didn't want to get them involved, am I right? You have made your choice, now live with it. Stop having dreams that will never come true. Leave Luna alone. Alpha suddenly stops talking. She frowns a little, trying to cast away the noises in her mind. They really are everywhere. Alpha thinks of the unexplained irritation earlier and frowns again. It won't change for no reason. Something must be triggering it. The gate ahead suddenly opens. A shambling figure appears in front, as if to confirm her thoughts. Another test subject? No, he's completely infected. Can you control him directly? If you want to become an ascendant faster. Alpha pulls out her blade and looks at the enemy in front. Don't let him touch you. It will worsen the ascension network's corruption. Squeak. It was like a battle horn. Lurking Corrupted began charging at them. Kinetic Engineering Lab. Due to serious infection, both lost 20% attack. Can't see anything. Let's go. Keep moving. This victory is not the end yet. He really is so cool. In a lab located at the bottom of Fort Winter. Bottom level of Fort Winter. Seeing the data on the glaring screen, Godwin is finally unable to control his rage. He punches his desk. Professor's mood seems to be getting worse recently. Seeing Godwin's outburst, the frightened researchers cannot help but waver. You need to rest, Professor. Rest. How can I rest at this point in time? Godwin gets emotional again. He waves his hands as if he wants to grab something vague and distant. The data obtained from Imperia and Stigmata is a precious key. The opportunity to take control of the Ascension Network is right in front of me. How can I pause it now? But the mind stability of the vessel is near its limit. On top of that, we just received an earthquake warning from the logistics department. We need to halt the experiment until the earthquake is over. An earthquake? When did that happen? Professor, you really need a break. Use the next set to, mo to, module per to model parameters. Continue the experiment. The assistant still wanted to say something, but he only let out a sigh. Understood. As the participants receive their orders, Godwin continues to stare at the screen in front. He is fully concentrated. 
Over time, he has ignored the trembling ground beneath his feet. Another earthquake. Protect the experiment terminal. Completely ignorant of the noises nearby. Are you out of your mind? Guards! Guards! Gah! He ignored the splash of blood on his face. He forgot the senses of pain, smell, or touch. He only sees the slow flowing green data stream. The data that could not be understood without in-depth analysis is now simple and clear like a children's picture book. The access terminal is already powered off. Godwin suddenly grabs it and lets out a frenzied laugh. Ah, I did it! I finally did it! Ahem. Blood comes out of his eyes and nose. It flows into his mouth along the wrinkles causing a violent cough. Cough. Hurry, record the data now. Godwin finally stops coughing and shouts out loud, but the dead bodies in the lab apparently cannot respond to his request. However, he does not seem to be bothered. Instead, he just points at a black figure that broke into the lab before he could notice, furiously reprimanding it. What are you doing? Stop wasting time. Yeah. Uh. A thick, pungent smell comes out when the last gate is opened. Dried blood, toppled desks and chairs, smashed terminals. The devastating scene is well preserved as cleaning robots are not allowed into a, such a top secret lab. Ugh. Lucia had made every effort to avoid direct contact during the earlier battle, but she was inevitably exposed to the virus from the vast number of corrupted. Under normal circumstances, such a level of exposure would not even require a connection from the Commandant's mind beacon. But right now, this slight amount of punishing virus has become a spark that detonates the bomb, raising her infection to an incredible level. The once insignificant ripples have turned into an overwhelming tsunami, threatening to devour Lucia Lucia's consciousness. It must not... Alpha is still able to move freely, but the burning pain in her left hand and the ear-splitting screech she keeps hearing are reminding her that time is running out. You turn on the device. Alpha takes Lucia to the switch and then quickly walks to the room behind the observation window. What's this? The inside of the room leaves Alpha in a daze. Connected to the device is not a construct, but a skeleton highly corrupted by the punishing virus. The skeleton is chained to a chair, with multiple visible fractures on the wrists and chest. It must have gone through a lot of struggle before death. This must be the connection device Luna mentioned. Will it, will it take me to the Ascension Network? A human skeleton. They had lost all patience. Alpha tries to move the skeleton aside, but the moment she touches it, the bones disintegrate and collapse to the ground. With no time to hesitate, Alpha puts the device on herself and nods at Lucia. When the button is pressed, Alpha's consciousness is pulled into a vortex. Oh. We're gonna fight the... She's gonna fight the... The Ascension Network directly, okay. Captive Shadow, now I am your cage. PC. Okay, is everything good? Sorry, right, everything kind of just froze up there, so I just want to... Everything's good? Everything? We're, we're live? No... No issue, right? No issue? Let me refresh this just to be sure. Bit rate is a little unstable. Uh, but are we good? Hey, right? we're not. There hasn't been any OBS connections. No. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. I want to have to do splicing of videos again. Alright. As she expected, 
When she opens her eyes, she sees the home that once belonged to Luna and her again. Welcome home, sister. The winter frost had dis has dissipated. New green sprouts have grown. Somehow, Alpha has also returned to her former appearance. Luna. It is Alpha's second time here. She once thought the girl in front was just an illusion generated by the Ascension Network to deceive her, but she was not. This place is not a carefully set up trap, but the last shelter that Luna could offer without violating her duties. It is also the only connection left between them. The girl in white wants to approach her closest person like always, but she stops soon after. This is your last time here, isn't it? Yeah. Alpha turns away as she is about to leave. Luna, you once believed the only way to change this world was to completely destroy it. But after you came back from the moon, you changed. You were willing to believe in other alternatives. I was glad to see those changes in you. But they also reinforced the connection between you and the Ascension Network. I was worried but didn't do anything. Alpha closes her eyes. There's a rare hint of fragility on her face. I made a lot of bad decisions before I could realize it and had given up taking action on my own and begun to rely on you. I kept telling myself to wait, to observe, that I needed more information before taking action. But I forgot the most important thing. Without action... All preparation would be wasted effort. Luna. I'm sorry that I left all the decisions for you to make. I was the one stuck in the same place. Alpha opens her eyes again and continues walking towards the door. Luna. I don't know what I meant for you. To, what it meant for you to choose the Ascension Network. Or what the Ascension Network really meant to you. But there is one thing I am certain. It didn't give you an option to give up. Regardless of which path you will choose in the end, I want to keep as many options as possible for you. That's why we need to separate from each other temporarily. I'm going to a faraway place. Sister. You can go. Do what you want to do. The warm shell is slowly collapsing. Alpha pushes the door open. As she walks on the shattered ground, the gaze behind her gradually disappears. When the gaze disconnects, Alpha enters the irrevocable reality. Is this really the right path? A voice similar to hers echoes in the consciousness space. Her limbs are tightly tied up by chains and ribbons. Black cubes float around her, giving the entire space a confined feel. The shattered mirror reflects Alpha's real-world image. All eyes turn to her. That's the only connection between the two of you. Are you going to give her up? I'm not. That's why I can't allow myself to keep being manipulated. Alpha fiercely struggles. The crimson shackles continue to break and reform. Will her consciousness be devoured before she can escape, or will she break away first at the bottom of this mind? I could have stopped him if I had enough power. Only the strong will survive, that's the only truth. The noises are turning into Alpha's familiar voices. They sound so near, yet so far. Is this some sort of hallucination, or her true feeling that had never been revealed? The civilization of this planet has embarked on new steps. Their life form needs a new round of evolution. That is why the Ascension Network began its filtering. That is why the Ascendants came to the world. The punishing virus isn't a weapon or a tool. It's an inevitable law of nature that all civilizations will encounter during their development. Alpha sees a vast space full of stars. The light from billions of years ago reflects in her eyes. Since its birth, the universe has carried various information structures, space, matter, 
energy. Different civilizations had different names for them. During their development, they gradually discovered these structures and interacted with them, creating new ones. Each information structure has its own mission and purpose. Humans. Intelligent lives are also a part of these numerous information structures. The interference between information structures isn't one-sided. If one structure can affect the other structures, it will also receive their influence. Punishing virus has always been around. It will only be discovered under certain conditions. If punishing virus is always around, what is the ascension network then? Interaction leads to new structures. This law also applies to punishing virus. The birth of ascension network is inevitable. It is a predetermined destiny. What exactly is the purpose of ascension network? To filter populations and civilizations until it has identified those individuals that can possibly break the law. Individuals. Stagnant civilizations will ultimately decline and perish. This form of life cannot halt the peace of evolution. The ascension network will continue to filter until those individuals emerge. This is the universe's destiny. We look forward to unknown possibilities and give a test to the variables. We can reach the ending. The starry sky disappears in front of Alpha. She sees herself standing on a snowfield. Not gonna lie, consider those voices kind of sounding like um the anti-spirals from Guren Lagan. Vital fluid has formed prismatic, meandering streams. Countless blades impale the ground nearby. They are her metals, but also her prison. There is nobody else around her. Endless wreckage and the remains have formed a throne. The sky seems within her arm's reach. Seeing such a view, Alpha smiles. There are no unbreakable destinies. Absolute laws don't exist. Survival of the fittest may be a common law, but it is never the truth. If nothing can survive till the end of the filtering, that's no different from locking us in a slightly bigger cage. Come out. Let's talk face to face. The next instant, Alpha disappears from the snowfield, leaving the remains behind like an empty grave. Looks like you have made your choice. The world has returned to its original form in Alpha's vision. Before she could realize it, she had already broken free from the shackle. Her frame is also restored. On the opposite side, another identical version of herself is walking out of the mirror. If you want to break the cage, then come face the final filtering. Hey, yo. I was about to say the same. Katanas clash with each other, creating bright sparks. Why shouldn't she be using an Orachi? I guess they're technically a Katana. Uchi Katana. Or, yeah, Katana, just a sword. Alpha has lost track of how long she has been fighting. She only remembers that each clash of the blades will send the mind space trembling. Dark cracks have appeared on the border of mind. Only infinite voidness can be seen outside. I like your unfaltering spirit, but how long can this mind last? As the two katanas clash again, the reaction force sends both of them back a couple of steps. Alpha tightens her grip on the hilt, forcing her arms to stop trembling. Your courage is commendable, but it will pull you into the abyss. Given the existing damage in your mind, you will only collapse before breaking away from the constraints. Alpha focuses solely on the attacking and dodging, but each of her attacks gets blocked by her identical self in the same way it was launched. The wilderness is burning. As the ground begins to crack, lava erupts from the earth's fissures. Everything in the mind is shattered from their collisions. Alpha is gradually burning out. 
You lost. Alpha blocks the frontal heavy slash, but a hilt follows closely and hits her abdomen. The kick sends Alpha flying away. She coughs out a large mouthful of vital fluid, barely holding herself up with the blade. The attack was supposed to be one of her best moves, but when her mind is on the brink of collapse, she has lost focus and is unable to capture every move of the opponent. Illusions of death flash before her eyes among the fragments of her collapsing consciousness. This was never a fair battle. Time to put an end to it. She puts her blade back in its sheath, preparing for a final blow to the temporarily immobilized Alpha. The flickering flames are about to die out. Get up! Cure. White snowflakes suddenly appear between the burning flames. As snowflakes fall from above, ice walls rise one after another, separating the two fighters. Yes! The black-haired girl slices down an ice wall, flashing Alpha's enemy consecutively. A deep dive in such a situation. Alpha can feel her near-broken mind being repaired. Why would you go this far? Just like what happened in City 75. When Lucia enters Alpha's mind through a deep dive, their mind begins to fuse and override each other as they share the same roots. Thanks to this fusion, Alpha's badly damaged mind was able to recover. However, once the fusion exceeds the threshold, it will also completely overwrite Lucia's consciousness. Why help her? You are already on different paths. Alpha's Phantom easily dodges Lucia's spinning slash, then strikes back with a few lightning bolts before Lucia is able to pull back the blade. We chose different paths. Snowflakes form an ice wall to block the incoming lightning. Lucia dashes forward again, swinging her blade non-stop to block the opponent's attack roots. But we always... When the blade clash, Lucia immediately turns on the thruster behind her. It rapidly charges forward and knocks Alpha's phantom away, creating a turbulent airflow that sends the hem of Lucia's jacket flying. Want to fight against the same destiny. Lucia falls back to Alpha with frost marks on her arm. She was covering the thruster's trail with her own body for that sneak attack to work. I don't want to be overridden. I need to return to those waiting for me. Get up, Alpha. Is this all you can do? Are you going to fall here? This error that she once wanted to correct has embarked on a path completely different from hers. She thought their paths would never cross again, that they would only walk in opposite directions. Somehow, destiny always brought them together every now and then. Sometimes, they point their blades at each other. Sometimes. Lightning comes back to Alpha's blade as she and Lucia stand side by side. Before I reach the destination, I will never fall. Finish her off before you're overwritten. A seemingly endless battle has finally come to an end. The other Alpha shatters like the mirror she walked out from. Her flickering body is full of cracks, as if it will collapse in the next instant. Ugh. More and more snowflakes appear in the consciousness space, flying in the air. Fusion is almost reaching the threshold. You must leave now. Lucia nods and disappears in the flying snowflakes. The consciousness space gradually turns back to its original broken look. You have discovered the path to another, another ending. Alpha does not seem bothered by her words. She just silently swings her blade once again at the phantom's collapsing body. As the mirror breaks into pieces, the other Alpha also disintegrates into data fragments that are about to return to their main body through a link. 
The next moment, they are stopped by an invisible barrier. The space around her mind begins to contract, forming an inescapable cage. So this is your real intention. Blindly following the law of the filtering will never get us out of this cage. To create new alternatives, I need a power of deterrence. Now, I am your cage. Babylonia will not thank you. Other ascendants will see you as traitors. Everyone will be coveting your unique value. Maybe you will not become everyone's enemy, but you will never have any allies. It's okay. This is enough. If you cut off this tributary, your starting and end points will never cross. Over time, the vortex of infinity will pull you into a void abyss. This is only a beginning. Twenty-three sixteen, bet on agreement. A few hours ago, in Grey Raven's temporary camp, I can complete. Turns out it's an encrypted comms address. As Lee continues to work on it, the lengthy non-disclosure agreement has turned into a simple string of numbers and letters. Shall we connect to this address, Commandant? Nod. Lee nods and connects to the address. After a slight noise, the screen shows no image, but a voice can be heard through the speaker. I'll jump to the conclusion. The reason why Lucia was... Hmm? That's Asimov. They're talking about Lucia. The sound quality is not great, but still enough for you to identify the speaker. Would you like to continue listening to it, Commandant? Keep going. It is worth finding out. Lee turns off the device when the speaker is no longer making any sound. Three of you remain silent, trying to digest the fact. Liv, can you check if this is a forged recording? I already matched the voice print and ambient noise halfway through the recording. It wasn't forged. What they were talking about... Is it true, Commandant? At least it's in line with my experience. What do we do now, Commandant? The source of this information is unknown, so the actual conversation won't be disclosed to you later, right? If we confronted the HQ, they would question where we got this information from. Maybe this recording itself was meant to sow discord among us. Get me Commander Nicola. Really? You would surely want to find out where you got it from. It's okay. I won't ask any question that's not related to Lucia. That will leave some room for explanation. I understand. Let me wipe off the wiretapping evidence from the terminal first. Alpha has just opened her eyes when the ground begins to shake violently. All the alarm indicators are screaming like the cries of a dying beast. Through the transparent glass, she sees a strange figure standing where Lucia was before. Wang. The dagger she hurled went through the glass, only to be blocked by a purple moon umbrella. Who are you? The tall, slim female puts away her moon umbrella and picks up the dagger, then gently places it on a nearby on a desk nearby. She takes off her top hat and bows to Alpha gracefully. Allow me to apologize again for my inappropriate manners last time. It's my honor to meet you, Ascendant. Or should I call you an agent now? The name's Lilith. I came with good faith. Lilith puts her hat back on and looks at Alpha with a sincere smile. This is the same voice I heard before. You opened the gate of Fort Winter, didn't you? Before entering Fort Winter, Alpha already sensed the camera's abnormal movement and zooming. She had been guarding against potential enemies. You could have gone in without my help, couldn't you? Still, it would be great if I saved you some time there. The best lie is half a truth. If the Ascendant who said this was her was here, they had probably already begun their sincere talks. Or did you take her? She was unconscious due to a mind overload. I left her in a safe location outside Fort Winter. I know you care about her a lot, but I don't want others to disturb us. 
disturb us. Another loud explosion has sent the entire Fort Winter trembling. Don't look at me that way. It was Kurono's people. I didn't get to run back to the multi-purpose fighter, but still managed to activate the self-destruct program. They didn't get to run back to the multi-purpose fighter, but still managed to activate the self-destruction program. I was so close to stopping them. What do you want? As a relatively new ascendant, isn't it normal for me to admire my powerful predecessor? I have the honor to witness your power. That had always been my goal ever since I joined the Ascendants. I have no interest in that. Go wag your tail at your master. Too bad he never revealed his power. Besides, I don't want him to see me as a usurper. Don't you want to know where that construct is? You can also tell me her location right now and get lost. I'm afraid I can't. It took me a lot of effort to find this opportunity. Although surrounded by explosions, they do not seem to panic at all. Alpha and Lilith both fall down as the ground underneath begins to collapse. After cutting apart the debris in front, Alpha sees a sea of lava. This is where those scientists dispose of their failed work. Lilith is sitting on an exposed steel bar, enjoying the majestic view. Of course, they were also regarded as failures and thrown into the incinerator in the end. Don't you find it sarcastic? I guess it'd be ironic. Those who claim to have controlled the direction of evolution ended up being filtered out. How do you know so well? I had a past similar to yours. She chuckles. Are you really not joining us? We can find... We can found an as association of Project Winter victims. I'm not interested. Tell me where she is. Show me how much you can get from me then. That's right, she is the... I am not doing good. I won't hold back. Now you're on the other side. There we go. Reached first threshold. Yeah, she's crazy crazy, okay. Okay. 
I already got one. Ouch. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's right, Parry's. Jesus Christ, okay. Okay, so I need a... Oh, okay, two resets. God dang it. I need to find the timing on that. Got command grabbed. Okay. Now you're on the other side of the line. <laughs> All right. I saw the shadow on that one, that's why I clicked it. Stop this. This is definitely an interesting fight, I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, managed to get on the counter there. Another one there, let's go. Another command grab. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go. Okay, so she is crazy, crazy. Got it. continues amidst fierce explosions. Cultivation tanks break away from their slots, falling into the magma. Right. Who will burn out first? Us or this place? Let's bet on it. The battle will end before that. The katana clashes with the opened umbrella once again, splashing numerous sparks. Too light. When this thought flashes through Lilith's mind, she sees Alpha's katana swirling upward into the sky. She then takes a sudden kick in her right abdomen. What? When Lilith is knocked away, she finally sees Alpha's hand with an, without any weapon in it. The swirling slash was nothing but a faint attack. You're terribly wrong if you think I can't fight without a weapon. The spinning katana falls back in Alpha's hand. Lilith quickly attempts to summon Punishing Virus to prepare herself. However, I can't control the virus anymore. Is this your power as an agent? 
Well, something seems to be interfering with the temporary access given by Vonnegut. I will not turn the list into a corrupted just yet, but it's sufficient to prevent her from adjusting her own virus concentration. Agent, is that what you think? Another great artwork. Lilith holds herself up with the moon umbrella as Alpha walks close. I surrender. Here's the location that ba of that Babylonia construct. She quickly raises her hands, letting her moon umbrella sway and fall to the ground. A location appears in Alpha's vision. Lucia is quietly leaning against the tree. Her shoulders are already covered by the fallen snow. I thought you were going to burn out with me. Even the most insane gambler would not challenge the house when there is no chance of winning. This place is going to collapse. Babylonia's people will be here at any moment. I would be digging my own grave if I continue to mess around. Lilith's hands remain in the air as if her madness was just a camouflage. With a move of her finger, a storage unit slides down Lilith's sleeve into her hand. Wait. Into her hand, she tosses it to Alpha. You probably haven't gone to the core database yet. You'll need the data in that storage unit, I think. Why did you do that? <sighs> the most important mission Mr. Vonnegut gave me was to invite you to join us. But you don't seem keen at all, which makes me wonder, am I not sincere enough? Can you leave me a message if you are satisfied with my additional service so I can at least bring something back to him? Lilith really takes out a voice recorder from her pocket. Alpha no longer responds. She just turns away and walks out from the exit. How heartless. Lilith presses the record button. A bunch of flowers pop out from the recorder stop. I prepared the surprise for you. What a waste. She seems a little upset as she pulls a petal out of the boot bouquet and tosses it the rest to the ground. Highly corrosive fluid flows out of the bouquet and rapidly spreads, accelerating the fall of the steel platform underneath. Before anyone arrives, this place would have already sunk into the magma. Better go before little puppy finds me. Lilith also disappears into the white mist, produced by the reaction between the corrosive fluid and metal. Alright. The ending of the chapter, let's go. No storms pause, but knowing the truth also means peering into the abyss. Are you truly ready? Three hours passed after Grey Raven received the mission to support and rescue Lucia. Asking too many questions is not going to do you any good. You should stay out of this. Actually, while I was in the coma, I saw a research institute from the perspective of someone else. Hmm. Keep speaking. After matching the coniferous forest and landscape against the satellite map, we have located the approximate position. What do you think about that perspective? I'm guessing it's from Ascendant Alpha's point of view. Why? I had a similar experience before. Wells was right. You are just a magnet for trouble. How's Lucia now? The Science Council believes Lucia was affected by Alpha's mind activity signals. They are using this connection to search for the signal source. Put Grey Raven in this operation then. I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to get involved again. Now, give me a reason why you must step into this mess. First, if the signal really came from Alpha, Grey Raven would be the best candidate given that they have fought her many times and are now equipped with the latest specialized frames. I'll take that as a reason, but not good enough. Grey Raven is not the, in the best shape now that Lucia is out of combat. Power armor is meant to provide commandants with bonus protection so they don't get killed in battles. Especially for some younger ones who are always reckless. Don't ever think that you can make up for the Missy constructs, let alone that she is a specialized frame. The second reason is, Corona still hasn't given up on me. So why don't we just get a little more of their attention? Huh. Good that you know it. Alright, since you're already prepared to become a bait, I won't say no. 
He arrived at the destination in a shuttle after discussing with Liv and Lee. He decided to split up for the best rescue effi efficiency. Snowstorm hinders your vision and slows you down, as you have to constantly watch out for the landscape under your feet. You continue to walk through the storm, trying to find a place with good visibility to look for shuttle debris. Bio signals approaching. You look at the direction pointed out by the AI. A vague figure appears in the storm, giving you a familiar feel. A word slips out of your lips. Lucia! The figure halts slightly, then walks over. You're finally here. If you come a little later, I'll have to, I'll have to send her somewhere else. Alpha. The black-haired girl quietly lies in Alpha's arms. There are not many marks on her frame, but her face rarely looks so exhausted. Keeping a close eye on Alpha, he pressed the button to call for assistance while checking Lucia's condition through mind connection. Alpha remained silent, with no intention to stop you. The blocker of her Inver device, is it damaged? He doesn't need it anymore. Why? Ask her when she wakes up. You'll trust her words better. Commandant. Alpha looks over. He noticed that she is no longer covering her left eye. You know what happened to her, don't you? I know it very well. Can't believe they didn't hide it from you this time. No. Someone must have leaked the information to you. They surely trusted you a lot. What would you do if they were to seal her up? I will carry on fighting for her. So she can see the situation getting better upon her return. Are you sure that you can survive till that day? If I can't make it, she can witness it for me. Is that so? Her fierce gaze pierces through the storm in your exoskeleton armor, as if she will see through your heart. Do you know that, to some people, protecting a corrupted construct can be seen as a sign of defecting? The choice I made was never meant to just impact the present. I want more than just a result. What's the future world like in your vision? Will it regain the glory of the Golden Age? I hope it can be a little better than that. A little better. After a brief moment of silence, what passes Lucia to you? Take her. You hold Lucia firmly and find out she has a storage unit in her hand. What's this? It contains the records of Project Winter. Haven't you been investigating it? Why? I already have what I want and don't care about the rest. And since you are taking action to bring another possibility into practice, it would be a shame if you keep repeating the past mistakes. You can't stay ignorant if you want to uphold your beliefs. But knowing the truth also means peering into the abyss. Are you truly ready? I won't go on that path. Is that so? Then struggle with all your might. Even if only one can reach the finishing line. I'd also like to see how far you can go. <laughs> what are you going to do next? Uh, your members are here. Go. Alpha looks into the distance beyond the snowstorm. We have our own paths to walk. It's not the time for them to cross yet. Before that, I suggest you focus on things beyond the reach of the other agent and the tower. What do you mean? Alpha seems to have lost interest in explaining. She turns away and disappears in the storm alone. You hear rushed footsteps from behind. Commandant! Lucia! You turn around and see your members quickly running to you, along with some purifying force members who seem to be heavily wounded. All good. Let's go back. Lucia finds herself in an empty hall. There are no people nearby. Not even a sound. Only pale light shines on grey metal walls to reflect her shadow. The vast emptiness brings her a level of anxiety that she has never felt before. She cannot help but retreat to the corner. The white light feels heavy and suffocating. 
the light seems to have its own will. The more she tries to move back into the shadow, the more closely it follows, mercilessly exposing her. Sample for observation. The key to capturing the punishing virus. Key subject. Ever since learning the truth, she has become used to these comments. At least. She touches her palm as if she can feel the familiar warmth. When she held that hand, it pulled her out of the void. That person gave meaning to her life. For the first time, she felt connected to the world. It all started with their encounter. Have you arranged for a commandant for... Better get it done before the activation program. She suddenly hears a discordant voice in her memory. Her palm begins to feel cold. Already done. Wait. Yeah. The surveillance on her takes top priority. Get her a smart commandant. Don't worry. We picked a great graduate after many rounds of selection. Her precious memories begin to crack like a mirror. She grasps her own hand. Her metal joints squeaking in terror. Is this what she has always been fearing? If meeting each other was also a carefully arranged coincidence, what else could be left in her? No. After she had learned that person's way of thinking and doing things, she realized that person had never lied to her. She desired to get closer to that person. Her feelings were genuine. These bonds were not fake. So, even if... Someone took it first. Um... My bad, I thought nobody would pick an incomplete squad. But don't worry, I'd already put Trunk into hibernation in the name of frame maintenance. You can transfer her to the care of one of our people later. I took the squad. Here's the information. <laughs> Not again. Commander? Nothing, just a graduate who refused the transfer order. Let it be. What? I say just let this one be the new commandant of Grey Raven. Ha. I wonder what the chief of FOS will bring for us. Turns out, there was never any carefully arranged coincidence. The light no longer feels cold, but warm. Instead, a person has probably saved her from another emptiness. The new chief of FOS? Oh, I remember. The name is... In this case, mine. Spaniard. I'm here, Lucia. Calibrating the vision module took Lucia some time. She finds the ceiling somewhat familiar. Commandant, where are we? You're in the construct department of Star of Life. Star of Life? Oh, how's your injury, Commandant? Wound wasn't deep. I'm already fine. Thank goodness. And sorry. It wasn't your fault. Besides, you already pushed me away. Lucia tries to sit up, but fails to do so due to the fatigue in the frame and a sharp pain in her mind. Don't push yourself too hard. Your frame was badly damaged. Not to mention your mind, it, it needs multiple repair sessions. She tries to feel her frame. This time, the fatigue is slightly different from the past injuries. Frame damage is probably not the sole reason for my fatigue. Mm. I will prove your innocence. Seeing the human's serious face, Lucia smiles. She is about to say something when the ward's door is suddenly opened. Spaniard, the visiting time is over. You need to go. I have a little more time. She's still under observation. There is no room for negotiation. Your understanding is appreciated. Hmm. Commandant, can you help me say I'm back to live in Lee? Sure. Lucia waves goodbye to the human and watches the ward door close again. We have finished the inspection of this thing. You can have it back now. Lucia's terminal. Apart from one new message, there is nothing special. A decision has been made to return it to her commandant. Once again, I would like to thank Ray Raven on behalf of my squad. It was Lee and Liv who found you. You should thank them. I will.
Among the crowd, a girl construct has come to the front desk of a hospital. Hi there, what can I do for you? Are you looking for the construct department? No. The girl shakes her head. Her presence is so weak that it feels like she will disappear into the crowd in the next instant. Could you please tell me, where is Mr. Kugawa Kurono? Someone is gazing upon her from not far behind, but she has not noticed it. Mm. Mm. That was it. She didn't seem to be interested in joining us. In fact, she was strongly against it. Did you also see this coming, Mr. Vonnegut? He did not answer. Why did you set a test that I wouldn't be able to pass? That was harsh. Not really. I now have a basic understanding of their purpose and abilities. More importantly, I need to confirm whether she would interfere with our upcoming plan. Besides, that would make you work even harder to complete the other task, don't you think? Lilith opens her palm. A storage unit lies on it. I wouldn't be able to catch it from the endless sea of data if my dear auntie didn't generously share the key with me. Nagut takes the storage unit from Lilith. He puts it in front of his eyes, admiring it like a piece of treasure. Pardon my rudeness, but there is a small question I'd like to ask. What do you plan to do with this sample? There's a promise from long ago that I need to honor. You did well in the test. We're almost ready to awaken Spelia. What about the Forsakens? Shall we keep going? Their leader is quite sharp. He's already begun investigating. No need to worry. They won't have time for us. Are you talking about those deserters from Babylonia? Not only them. Well, to a certain extent, all the events and conflicts can be attributed to one thing to begin with. What was Ishmael looking at? I think that was Siderleek, wasn't it? Watanabe looks at the newly piled up mound in front. He puts a paper flower on it. You wouldn't be able to stop the kidnapping without the intelligence you sent us. What? Walker. Your sacrifice will not be in vain. One day, the original orders will be restored on this land. Watanabe looks up. Old and new burial mounds lie up in the cemetery. There's paper flowers on each of them. The ashes of the sacrifice emerge with the sand under the mounds, returning to this land. He remembers everyone's names here. Nothing is forgotten. I'll see you later. Next time. I will bring some good news. Then Abe rises to his feet and leaves the small cemetery. Boss, we have more newcomers. Help them settle down first. Don't forget to verify the identities. Got it. But I'm afraid we don't have enough people to train them. I mean, we aren't much better than new recruits ourselves. It would be quite a challenge for us to take care of so many newcomers. I'll go to the training camp myself. Another senior of mine will also come to help them train. Your senior... I thought you were senior enough, leader. Of course. I respect him a lot. Watanabe said with a com with a complex look, but he did not reveal that person's name. Is there anything else I need to know? Um, it's about the clean zone. Babylonia has sent someone here again. It's only a matter of time before they come again. I just didn't expect them to be so impatient. Where are they now? Take me to them. The closed doors of the Science Council are now open. Oh. Hello, Commandant. Hi, Rosa. This isn't your appointment time. I was just passing by and wanted to say thank you. You see, the situation was the Science Council's responsibility. I just did what I should. You did more than that. Hearing your words, Asimov could not help but stop. Rosa. Yes? Go to the archives room. I want a copy of all the records related to mind overload in the experiments of Hyperreal. Huh? I, I see. Slightly anxious, Rosa rushes out immediately. When will I get to finish going through so many records, she mumbled. When did you guess that? During the conversation just now. Right. I was the one who added the encrypted comms address. So why are you here? Just to say thank you. You put a storage unit in Asimov's hand. What's this? Asimov's pupil pupils contract slightly. He's obviously guessed something. 
It's a record of the experiments in Fort Winter. You should submit it to the Commander Nicola. It's just a backup. Why did you do that? You have always stayed neutral. For you to do something so risky, there must be something that you really want. I'll take it for now. Can I ask a question? Bring it on. What will you do with this data? Whether it's the army or Kurano, they always withhold some information when sharing it with the Science Council. Not to mention their real purpose is to use the information to advance their plans. In a way, it makes the Science Council their accomplice. Perhaps President wants to stop Project Winter through politics, but as long as someone still hopes to exploit this project for their own good, it would only be a matter of time before it is restarted. Are you trying to end Project Winter completely? Right, but in a scientific way. The only way to completely crush their hopes is to prove it is wrong from the roots, which is why this complete information comes at just the right time. What about you? What is your goal? I don't want to see the same things happen again. This is Lucia from Grey Raven. The following recording is not subject to any form of coercion or interference. It is entirely of my own volition. Graham has developed unprecedented abnormal symptoms, which even caused me to hurt my commandant. Based on the message left by the escort team in my own evaluation, I cannot guarantee when I will go completely out of control before the problem is resolved. In order to avoid irreversible consequences and prevent innocent people from being hurt, before I can fix this issue of myself, I, Lucia, would like to step down as the captain of Grey Raven. I know this terminal will probably be discovered by the purifying force team who escorted me. If you can, please pass my words to Lee, Liv, and my commandant. I will safely return, no matter how long it will take me. That's all. You tightly grip the terminal, which is already getting warm in your pocket. We in the same team now? You reach out to Asimov. After a brief moment of hesitation, the mouse hands grasp yours. It feels a little cold. Let's go. Forming allies. All right, but that is Wintry Shackles. Main story complete. All right, all right. That was pretty good. Good, 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 good. But with that, at that, that is where I will end it. That would be perfect time. Be able to work on some stuff from the previous patch. And then I'll work on uploading um, these two parts for this uh, story patch onto my YouTube channel. So I will try to get and work on that. So thank you very, very much stopping by if you stop by any and all support is very much appreciated and as always may the moon guide you take care